Hey guys, um, <clears throat> so in this series I'm going to start doing a bit of commentary on, um, on videos that I've posted before. Um, this one I posted, it was taken down a little while ago, but I think the message is so powerful it, it warrants some kind of explanation. So let me, uh, let me play it for you here. Five to succeed and to conquer the way the all-time greats do. The all-time greats have to have a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. If you don't have a chip on your shoulder, then you're not going to be ever reach the heights or take the measures that it takes to become an all-time great. Yeah. Me, I had two chips. They robbed me at the Olympics, and I had a father that I separated from that I know in my heart didn't really want me to succeed without him. So those were my chips. And because I had those chips, I can't lose. Because if I lose, he wins. Mm, you understand me? So yeah. in my prime, if I lose, he went because he said I can't do it without him. And in my life, the way I was taught, the way I was brought up, all I need is God. Nothing against my dad, but all I need is God. So my, to me, God prepared you to get me to a certain level, but God took those roosters. God took a guy named Charlie Campbell. And you wouldn't know Charlie Campbell because he was a boxer back in the day, amateur boxer. But God showed me so much through Charlie Campbell that to this day, I still speak to Charlie Campbell because without Charlie Campbell, I might have never gotten to be Roy Jones Jr. Really? Charlie Campbell taught me so much about charisma that my father could never have taught me. That it was unbelievable. Charlie Campbell beat all my father's fighters as amateurs that were in his weight class. Easily, almost every time. Because he had charisma. Now they were better than him, but he had charisma. And he beat them with that charisma. How did he beat them with charisma? Because he believed in himself. He had confidence and he knew how to do stuff that made me love watching him. You understand me? And he wasn't the best puncher. He really didn't have the best boxing skills. But his motions, he breathed with everything he did. Even though he was flapping, he had sharp breath with it. You mm -hmm. understand me? And to me, I was like, whoa. And he beating these guys that on my team. So they learned the same thing I'm learning. But they can't have that kind of charisma because my daddy won't allow them to beat them people. He won't allow them to perform with that kind of confidence. You understand me? Mm -hmm. So I need to learn how to do what he doing. Because if I can add what he doing to what we doing, now I got something. How did you incorporate it? Well, I started doing the stuff he did. <laughs> a little bit of it. <laughs> until I figured out what it really was. You understand right, me? So some right. of the grunting, some of the moaning he did while he was fighting to show that he had breath control, I started doing it. Mm -hmm. So like when you hear Bruce Lee go, whoa. Charlie Campbell would do stuff like that in a really? boxing match. Now his punches were nearly as effective, were nearly as effective as the sound was, but he kept him on beat and in tune with the sound. So it made him look way better than he really was. <laughs> and he won the fights against these guys because these guys don't know how to do that. Wow. So I started copying some of it. Not all of it, but I started doing it, adding it to my stuff. When I met him, it became hell for all the little kids in the area. Really? What? <laughs> well, I learned charisma. Something my daddy can't teach me. And he beat my daddy fighters. And uh, to me, these guys are older than me. I'm 12. They 17. He beating them. Mm. So they ought to be better at what we're doing than I am. Because mm. they're older and bigger than me. Right. He beating them. No, I got to get that. So I got that. So was it also like you obviously had animosity with your father? There was, there was there was these. So you were looking for other ways to do it too. No, I had to find other ways. God had to talk to me in other ways. If God didn't speak to me other ways, here here's the real deal. When people don't understand, there's nothing against my father. It's just kind of our destiny, right? When a lion, this, this is why I tell people that nature is also a bible, right? When a lion get a certain age, dad will kick him out. He got to go. You got to go get your own pride. Cause this is my pride mm. and that's kind of how me and my father were. Mm. so it's like at a young age I knew I was gonna have to go because just the way things shaped up you understand me so me growing up watching even these guys watching before me I watched all of them get to the age but my daddy would never have allowed would never allow them to be as confident and as charismatic as Charlie Campbell was because he didn't allow that because mm, he was the boss. He's the boss. He but, was in control of everything. But he ain't got to fight nobody. Right. So then, after the 76 Olympics, God gave me a second confirmation. Howard Davis Jr. won the Val Barker Cup. I mean, he was the best fighter at the Olympics. But he probably was the only one of them gold medalists that didn't become world champion. Mm. 
Mm. Why? Because his dad had waited him way too long. So he waited so long that when he finally fought Jim Watt, he couldn't beat Jim Watt. Because in Howard Davis, the fire had died. Now in his daddy, the fire still was there. But mm. guess what? His daddy didn't got to fight Jim Watt. Right. How it does. <laughs> right. You understand me? That was my second confirmation that when I get old enough, I got to go. Yeah. You understand me? So it's like, I start to understand, and like I said, nature has always been my Bible. So people always say, why you love animals? Why you love chickens? Why? That's where I learned God's teachings from, because God made those animals, and people can't change them. Mm. You understand me? You can neuter them, but when you neuter them, you change them to a whole other animal. Right. And to me, in society, sometimes that's what they're trying to do to us. They're trying to neuter us. Yes. So when they neuter us, we don't fight back. Well, that's a giant thing with men today. This is what I'm trying to tell you. It's with toxic masculinity this and all that bullshit. This is what I'm trying to tell you. They're trying yeah. to mentally neuter us. Yes. When they neuter, when you neuter a horse, he becomes a bland. Gelding. Yeah, he yeah. again, he don't, he don't fight back no more. Right. He don't care no more. Right. You understand me? So it's like, if you neuter a man, he becomes nothing. He yeah. don't care no more. He ain't gonna fight back. He ain't gonna even stand up for himself. Exactly. Cause he ain't got no what God gave. You took it out. You feel me? And yeah. to me, that's emotionally, mentally, is what they try to do to us without physically doing it. So that was a problem that me and my father also had. And people say, well, why are you so against what goes on? Well, to me, I, that's what he was trying to do. But what I learned is, and this is gonna take you down that road too. I used to hunt when I was a kid, right? We would hunt squirrels. When we hunt squirrel, there would be some squirrels that would have a penis, but no balls. Because the other squirrel bit their balls off. The daddy. The daddy did it? The daddy have a nest about anywhere from 10 to 25 females. Every time one of them have a little babies, he goes and bites the nuts out of all the meals. <laughs> because he wants no competition. That's no, listen, but you, gotta know, but you gotta know this now. I get it. So this <laughs> shows me he can't do it physically, but this is what he's doing. I watched him do it to all these other guys I told you about mm, yeah. before me. They can't beat Charlie Campbell because they're gettings. Uh, Charlie Campbell's a stud. <laughs> yes. He ain't better than them. He ain't stronger than them. He ain't even a better puncher than them. But in, in, in his mind, he's a stud. Mm. In their mind, they're gettings. Because mm. my dad has made them so, he's mentally beat them down so low that they have no real fight back in them. Because mm. they got to be second to my father first. I can't be that guy. So just <clears throat> just some commentary on this. You know, he says nature is a Bible. Uh, that's a very interesting phrase. Nature is a Bible. Because when we think of Bible, we think of a uh, holy book. We think of uh, something that's written down, you know, something that cannot be violated. It's like a bunch of text. And this is the sacred text, and you shall not see anything. Uh, no, nothing outside the sacred text matters. You know, for a lot of um, uh, a lot of Christians, it's like that. It's it's what's written in the Bible matters. Anything outside the Bible, not so much. You, everything external must be referred to back to the text. Okay, but here Roy Jones is saying, nature is the Bible, which means that, like, you know, Bible in terms of a a, a guide for moral action, a guide for living a guide for what's right and wrong, a guide for, you know, just a guide in general, a guide to live your life. That's what a Bible is, right? Because we try to, you know, Christians live their life trying to emulate Jesus through the Bible. And Roy Jones is saying that nature itself is a Bible. You know, so it's very interesting. Basically, he's saying that God, the divine order is communicated to human beings, not just through a book or things that are written, but it's around us every single day, um, seen in all things. Nature is a Bible. Everything is nature. You know, if, if what Roy, Roy Jones had a revelation about the nature of the relationship between him and his father and the other fighters, and what he needed to succeed through drawing an analogy with you know what he learned as a kid, his insight into the father and the squirrels and him biting the nuts, nuts off all his male kids, you know, so. That pointed the way for him, you know. So it's kind of a it's kind of a lesson for all of us that uh, the the wisdom we need to apply to situations, to solve problems, to apply to our personal lives, whatever our personal lives are, you can find analogy in nature. You know, this is kind of what the the I Ching is about. If you ever read the I Ching, which is the Chinese uh, ancient 
book of changes. It's a one of the four great Chinese classics. It's a divination book. Well, it's actually a book about. It's a book of just insights about life and stuff like that. Like it's you don't have to really believe in anything. The belief more comes in if you uh, toss the coins. Do they really say something about your question or not? That that aside, the book itself is a book of nature analogies. Taoism is mostly about nature analogies, and I think that's exactly the kind of thing Roy Jones is talking about. Looking at nature and seeing parallels in the things that you're facing and the things that, that you know you see it on nature, which unites you you with nature because you're not separate from it at all. You are nature. The problems you're facing is nature. You know, so nature is a bible. You look to nature to apply to your life, but if you do it well, like your life can be like a bible as well. Just like people who think that if they uh, you know live like Jesus did. They are fulfilling the biblical uh, tradition, and you know they will get like a God's reward. If Roy, what Roy Jones is saying is true, it's like if you live your life according to your, your what you see in nature, it's pretty much the same.